Yeah. It sounds like Coldplay, doesn't it? I, I love that. I love Coldplay. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown black man, and I'm not afraid to say I love Coldplay. I love him. I mean, I'm, I'm into my feelings. I really am. I'm, I'm trying not. To, I'm trying not to, to act geeked, but anybody knows me knows that's impossible. I've never was cool. Never pretended to be cool. And we're gonna bring on. I, I, I everybody I bring on has. I have like a sort of like a idolistic. I don't like to say idolistic, but I I look up to in, in a way. Everybody I brought on, but this guy. My guy, anybody knows me knows I love motorcycles, motorcycle racing, motorcycles are my life, comedy, entertainment. But the one thing, the only thing above motorcycles and motorcycle racing is the guest I'm going to bring on, and that's wrestling. Wrestling made a significant change in my life, and the guy I'm going to bring on today is one of the most accomplished wrestlers in, it, it, oh my gosh, in just wrestling history. Is he ready to come on? Okay, let's bring him on. Uh, I, I can't wait. I'm excited, man. I hope I don't screw this up. Oh, there he is. There he is. How you doing there, champ? Can he get it? It's great. He's like me. He can't. He's not really astute. What's up, champ? How you doing? I'm doing great. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. I, I, I was telling everybody, and um, first of all, I, I always apologize to all my guests because from from the moment, I, I, I've i only met you twice. And I know you don't remember. Uh, I met you twice, and but I followed you on Instagram, and I always bother you on Instagram. I always yeah. leave, I always leave yeah, comments, like, and I go, and I go, man, like I, boys. I, I know, I, I go, I got to not piss this guy off, right? But, but and I tell everybody that, but I also, and I thank you for, for coming on also, but I remember... Uh, the first time I met you, I was talking to Keith Nix, uh, and we, I, for some reason, I was at a uh, at a dance. I think at Booker T. I don't know what I was doing there. Really? And you walk and you walk through the door, and I go, "Oh my God, that's Keith uh -huh. in there." And you didn't talk to me at all. And I and I walked, <laughs> I walked away and left. And then the second time was about. I think well, you're talking was, Booker T. You know, if you're talking Booker T, then it was probably because you didn't have a skirt on, or you know, you wasn't. You know, you're just one of the boys. <laughs> well, first of all, let me get to this. First of all, you were originally supposed to be a McLean Scott, and then you sold out and went to Booker T. You were supposed to be a Don't McLean Scott. Start. Don't even start. <laughs> the great thing about Don't that is, start. is that being from Oklahoma, you I, and I honestly, I thought this was everywhere. Well, I, as far as I know, we're one of the few states where 7th, 8th, and 9th was junior high, and then 10th, right. 11th, and 12th was high right. school. Everywhere else, when they say middle school, I was like, what's middle school? I never knew what every, yeah. it, around the country. Oklahoma had their own way of doing things. Right, and right. Remember, and and McLean didn't have freshmen. They, oh, they didn't. I didn't time. know that. No, I didn't know that. No, no. So, Booker T had freshmen. And really, when I when I chose to go to, Oklahoma, uh, to, to Booker T, I wasn't – freshmen weren't even – eligible to compete in high school mm -hmm. at that time it wasn't you know, like a month later the school board voted it through and i was even eligible to compete as a freshman but when i went first went there they still wasn't competing swimming was competing but wrestling wasn't competing no other sport was competing in, on a high school level now, so, that, did you put booker t on the map uh wrestling wise was it you of course of course <laughs> Of course, I love. I wasn't. Man. I wasn't. I wasn't the best guy on that team my freshman year. I wasn't the best guy, man. We had some hammers. You know, Thomas Landrum, oh, uh, Thomas Rodney Landrum. Hooks. You know, Thomas. My yes. freshman year, Thomas pinned thirty six out of thirty six. Pinned everybody wow. around. Everyone. Wow. I remember, I remember he was legend when I was coming up and we both came up through the YMCA. We both did uh, yeah. obviously different YMCA. You came up through the Hutchinson YMCA, right? Yep. Yep. I, and I came up to and I and when I you know I'm from Muskogee so they did away with the YMCA and it hurt my heart because yeah. I mean people don't realize the YMCA was it's part of the community I learned to swim oh, yeah. there I learned to yeah. uh, bow and arrow and wrestling I still to this day remember the the little flyer that came and it said wrestling and and right. I go I'm gonna try this and and honestly the love affair started. I'm, I, I know you follow me on Instagram, but I don't know how, how, how hard you follow me. But I, it's always it's motorcycles, motorcycles. But I tell people, right. as much as I love motorcycles, wrestling was is, is still number one in my life because it it, it changed my life. Because I was I was a fat kid growing up around eighth grade. Toughened you up, man. Yeah, and, made and, you and, tough. And yes, it did. And then after that, I said, you I, up. I, I said I uh, said I was going to wrestle my uh, I was going to wrestle my ninth grade, and we had a different wrestling coach come in. This guy, and we knew he was a runner. And yeah. and I and I I never wanted to be the the worst guy. As my coach said, my wrestling coach told me, "Don't be the weak link on the chain." And right. That's, and that's when everything changed, and I started getting in shape. And then, oh yeah, when there was somebody to look up to, the people I looked up to, it was Dan Gable, 
and I hate to break your heart, it was Nate Carr and it was you. So when you two <laughs> wrestled, I was like, no, I didn't want you guys. To, I, I loved you. I loved you equally because you were from Oklahoma and you carried right. yourself with such class. That's right. what I loved about you. Appreciate and, you. And, and Nate, Thank you. Nate was, I mean, Nate did, but Nate was different. Nate was a little cockier. Uh, he's, uh, he's cocky. He's, he's running his mouth, man. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> I, I just talked to Nate yesterday. We were talking about that. We were on the phone yesterday. We were talking about that. He's yeah, Nate was, uh, he was a mouth, man. He's a mouth, right? But he's I love mouth. that. But yeah, my, my foundation came from the YNCA. I mean, the things that, the principles that I learned still stay with me today from what I learned from uh, the YMCA. My first coach was was huge on, the value of being a great teammate and, and how to be a great teammate, you know, and, and the things that you needed to be, you know, um, as far as being successful, it all started with being a great teammate. And so I learned those values early, man. I was always a great teammate. And uh, what I learned, and, and the reason I kind of stayed in the wrestling, because the guys that, that were, were in the YMCA, the wrestling group, like the older guys, mm -hmm. they were the leaders in the YMCA. If there was a problem, Going on in, at the at the Y, a kid mm -hmm. getting in fights or skirmishes, they would the, the administrators would always go to the wrestlers. Yes, they would go to and they would like police the area. They would like get everything back in order and and uh, but they were the guys that were the leaders. And I can promise you, I wasn't the most talented guy on that team, on my team. We had we had some kids that were just flat out phenom phenomenal wrestlers. When I okay. Started. Saying that, that being said, okay, if you knew you were in that, now, when did you, and I always wanted to say that, how did you make that leap from, okay, you knew you were good, probably, you knew you were good, yeah. but how do you make that leap from good to great? Because I saw you, I saw you giving, uh, uh, talk to these kids after uh, yeah. a, 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 a practice at University of Iowa, and you were telling them, sometimes you're at, you're right here, uh, the yeah. close to being greatness, and sometimes people quit and they don't realize how close they are. But if you don't know how close you are, I mean, I mean, like, how do you know that you're that close? How do you know without giving up? Well, you know, I think it's just, it's your foundation. You know, it's just something that I was, that I was instilled in me early on, mm -hmm. you know, my mom and my dad, I mean, my mother, I mean, my confidence comes from, from her teaching, from her, her spirit. Right. And she was always like, you can be whatever you want to be as great as you want to be, as long as you focus and you work hard, and you'd never give up on your dream, right? So when I started, and I, it was like when I was 10 years old, when I kind of realized what the Olympics was all about, mm -hmm. right? That 1972 team with Gable oh, and Wayne yes. Wells and yes. Chris Taylor and Jimmy Carr and those guys, I was exposed to those guys early. Cause they used to wrestle the US Open down in Stillwater, which is right. only an hour from Tulsa, right? right. So my parents, we'd, we'd go down there and we watch we watch those guys compete and so, when that 72 Olympic Games hit, man, I was I was 10 years old. I'd have been wrestling for four or five years. I was making a name for myself. And man, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's my journey. That's that's who I want to be, right? And uh, so I go back to my mom and I'm like, hey, that's, you know, can I do that? You know, can I? She said, sure, absolutely you can do that, you know? And so coming from, um, and we were like the only black team in the area. So, you know, right. it was not a lot of black kids wrestling. Right. You know, a lot of my boys are playing basketball and football, and I was getting that pull. Yeah. You know, but wrestling, man, yeah. wrestling just, it was a self defense. I mean, you know, right away, I, I recognized that it was a self defense on the playground. I could, I could protect myself right. from the bullies, right? And so <laughs> yeah. I was protecting my crew. Right. Right. So I, I, right. I, I recognized right away when this thing is real, right? And so, but I loved it because I got hooked on the sport. And then when I saw the Olympics come around, I'm like, man, that's. That's what I want to do. And it just stayed in the back of my head. And I just never, never wanted to give up on it. But, but that, and that's another thing I want to ask you, because I mean, at the same time, you know, I grew up and I remember watching the 76 Olympics. And I swear to God, I watched it and I said, when I watched Bruce Jenner uh, do that, yeah. decathlon, I literally went outside and started running down right. the street. My dad said, what right. are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready for the Olympics, dad. And he, <laughs> and he was like, OK, whatever. And we had different parents. Right. My dad was like, all right, whatever. And he just shut the door. I guess right, he knew yeah, I was yeah. like, I wasn't a good runner. But I mean, it's still sitting in my back of my mind. But I never learned how to like to keep it there. Like, that's what I want to do. And eventually it, it kind of faded away. Yeah. How did you keep yeah. focused for that long? I mean, you were 10, so how did you – I mean, we all had dreams in, and sometimes they fade, mm -hmm. and sometimes you keep them there. How did you keep yours in focus for all those years? Yeah, that's a great question. I think just my environment, you know, the environment, you know, my family structure, you know, kept, you know, kept me going in the right direction. You know, just the people that that, I, that we had around us, you know, mm -hmm. just our whole – Northside Tulsa, man, we – you know, it's 
it was a community that was very strong and, and believed in, you know, uh, going after your dreams and your goals. I mean, I yes. grew up with Wayman Tisdale and John Starks. And, Tillis, Quick uh, Tillis. Quick Tillis, absolutely. Ricky Reed was Quick Tillis's cousin. Ricky Reed went to Oklahoma State and was a, got third in NCAA tournament in wrestling. But yeah, Quick Tillis was lived around the corner from me, yeah. right? And his well, brother, his brother, Keith, was a better boxer. Not his brother, but his cousin, Keith Reed, was a better boxer than, than Quick Tillis, and that was his cousin. Really? So we were all right there together, man, and so pushing each other. And uh, you know, McQuarters, I don't know if you know uh, R.J. McQuarters. Yes. He, he went to Booker T, and went to Oklahoma State, played for the Chicago Bears. Yes. You know, his dad his dad was, was a wrestler in high school, one of the best coming, coming out of Booker T. I didn't know that. Sp- Spider McCoy called him Spider. R.W. R. W. McQuarters is his dad. He was a, he was the state champ out of Booker T. We used to watch him wrestle as a kid. So, no, we come from a long line of, of uh, you know, just uh, people that just go after their dreams, man. So I wasn't going to get out or give up on it. Well, but here's the thing now, because wrestling was my whole life going. Right. I, I knew I wanted, I had, I had a couple goals in life. One was to leave Oklahoma, but another one was to <laughs> wrestle. It was. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I always tell people, I'm, I'm glad I grew up there. I'm so yeah, glad yeah. I grew up there, but I right. wanted to leave. I had bigger goals. Yeah. But in Absolutely. wrestling was everything. For, and this was before, you know, YouTube and, and, and the internet generation. So when you had to find out somebody was good or whatever, you had to read the Tulsa World on a Sunday, right. how somebody did right. at the Perry Tournament. Right. You had to read the Tulsa yeah. World or, and, and, and you stay connected. You watch KTUL or whatever yep. and see who, who was wrestling. And that's how we did it back in the day. And I and so I said, okay, I want wrestling to lead me to college. And I couldn't wait to wrestle in college. And the first day I set foot on college at, at my junior college at NEO in Miami, yeah. the first day I it it was like breaking up with a girlfriend. I go, you know what? I don't I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Right. And I and I finished those two years out. But I didn't have the same passion, and, and it really did hurt me because I mean that was my whole life was wrestling. I loved right. it. I still love it. But and and I had you know those dreams, and then. And I, and it, it, it slowly faded from me. And I always want to, right. and I always want to ask, like I said, ask you, somebody like that. You've seen people like that. They grow up loving wrestling, and sometimes they just get caught up, whether it be drugs, whether they grow up with the wrong girl, and and, and they lose yeah. focus. And, and and I was want to know how did you maintain that focus all the way through? Because you know, like, and I always want to, and everybody goes through it. But did you ever go through like those times where you self doubted yourself, like, is this really the path for me, or is this really, yeah. huh? like, when you went, when you were seated number one at your first year yeah. at the NCAAs and you got beat, didn't even place. I mean, did, yeah. did that bring you down? Was there ever a period where you were down and you go, hmm? You know, I never thought about, I never thought about quitting. I never gave up on it. You know, I think, again, I think it was just my, my, uh, my foundation mm-hmm. of belief. Of course, the grace of God kept me, kept me going. But, you know, I, I just think that, that the way I came up, you know, just in my mindset, you know, I just wasn't going to give up on it, right? I just never was going to give up on trying to, to, to be great. Right. You know, and so every up, every ups and down, every up and down, you know, I just kind of bounced back. And I think it was it all came back to my my belief system mm-hmm. and what I believed, you know, of myself, you know, how I thought I could could be the best, you know, and just that that was instilled into me early on. Um, but I think I think and I and I saw a lot of kids, like I said, I wasn't the most success. I wasn't the best kid when I was in that YMCA. Right. There were some talented kids. But I think just 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 our family structure and the things that um, we would do as a family kind of kept us going in the right direction, you know, and I just was, I was different man. I was, cause I have, I have two older brothers at Russell, right? Right. They were after they were after they got through with college, they were done. Mm-hmm, right. They, 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 they didn't want nothing else to do with it, right? As far yeah. as wrestling. <laughs> right, right, right. But that just, that just wasn't my story. You know, my story was, you know, I, I wanted to be the best, you know, I wanted to be the best. At, and, and the question that I, that I, that I needed answered, that I always told myself once I got to a level that I, I felt I could, I could get to the next level was how good can I be? You know, once I got to a point to where I was doing well and I was winning a lot and getting a name for myself. But then after college, I'm like, man, how, I don't know how good I can be. I, I'm not, I, I still feel like I can get better. Right. right. And so I want to, I want to know, I want to answer that question. How good can I, can I be, you know, with everything, in place and, and really getting out of college and then being able to totally focus on my craft. Right. You know, not to worry about school, not to worry about team. And I could just totally focus on myself. Then I really start to shoot up. Then I really start to jump levels when I can really just focus 
on the sport, right? And, and myself and getting better. Okay. Now, okay. Now, has there ever a time where you consider yourself great? I know you said, when, 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 you know, how can I get better? But as ever, and I know you're so humble. And I mean, if I'm, and and it's not, it's not even BS. It's just true. Right. That's how you are. And, and granted, I could tell wrestler to wrestler, <laughs> Oklahoma. I can still see the tiger, but I can see the puma underneath yeah. you. But oh, yeah. but has there ever been a time where you go, I'm great now? Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. honestly, I mean, is it, yeah. okay, I'm, I've reached greatness now. Or, or, right, or do you, right. you know, I'm good, but, I mean, even after you won after you won the Olympics, after you won the gold medal, being the first African-American to win a gold right. medal in wrestling, right. was there a time when you went, okay, I'm great now? Yeah, that was that was the moment. That was the moment when I, when, when I can say that I beat everybody in the world and I'm a world champ and I can beat everybody in the world, right. then, yeah, that's, that's greatness. That's greatness. You know? So even before that, when I knew I was on my path, you know, when I got out, get out of school in 84, it took me three years to really get on that level, to really get to where I thought I could beat anybody in the world at my weight class, anybody. I don't care who it is, where they're from, Mongolia, Russia, Africa. I don't care where you come from, but you're in my weight class. I, I think I can win, right? So it took me three years to really get to that level. Um, but once I got... 87, and then I had to be Dave Schultz, right? I knew Dave was a world champ. I know he was competing on that level to where he could win, you know? Mm-hmm. And so once I got to that level, then I, then I went to Russia a couple of times and kind of really saw how the Europeans wrestle and, and saw those Russians compete. I came back a different guy. I came back and I had the, I had the formula. I had the, I had the, you know, I had the, um, I had the skills, but I had the, the mentality, but I knew what I had to do to get to that level. Right. And so once right. I once I won, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like, man, that's 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 greatness. And I and I say that about anybody. I don't think you're great until you can say you you were world champ. I, I agree. Now, now what now explain what is that the European style? At least when you grew up, when you say you had to get you said European style of wrestling. How was it? Because I mean that was back in the day, especially back in your day, there was yeah. such a, a big divide between collegiate wrestling and international wrestling. So what was that European style that you had to get used to or the way the Russians wrestled? Well, you know, they that's all they do is freestyle. You know, right. Those guys, they they don't they don't go back and forth from folk style to freestyle. They come out to shoot freestyle wrestling. Mm-hmm. And so they just got a different mentality. It's a different sport, man. It really is a different sport. I mean, there's of course there's wrestling, right? But still, there's different techniques. There's different um, strategies. There's different uh, maneuvers that you do. Different 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 way you train. So it's really kind of a different different game. Um, you don't see that in basketball. You don't see that in football. You don't see that in hockey. It's, it's really, it's different when it comes to the rules. And so they grow up with that mentality and th- that aggressive mm-hmm. uh, nature that they have, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so that's really kind of what it is. It's just they don't. They're they're very calculated. They don't make very many mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just strong. I mean, the first time I brought a, a Russian man, I was like, what what was that? And I, I, you know. <laughs> I had never in my life felt anything like that. And what I mean by that is just, I mean, just the, the position that they had, just how strong they were. Um, it was just brute just strength, like, grip strength? Well, it was just like, it was grip strength. It was just position strength. They're hard to move. Yeah. I mean, just like moving a, a brick wall, right? And so you really had to, I had to go back and, and change the way I trained as far as with my, my, my tendons and my hands and my, in my feet just top, head to head to head to toes, man. I had to change. Okay, like like what like like, like what like what did you do? Like when you well, changed? I just yeah, I just I did. I I, I wrestled more. I, I, you know, and I, it really, it was just more about experience too. Okay, but um, I, I did. I, I you know, I got better and stronger in my lower back, uh, my neck, and my shoulders. I just really went to work with my my core. Not that I didn't do that before, but just different as far as like if you get to a leg on a Russian and and they're in position and it's hard to finish man so you really had to get stronger with i had to get stronger with my lower back so when i got to a leg i could pop up and get to my feet yeah. you know then take them you know take them down from there because before they were just kind of crushing me right so i just yeah. had to get stronger i had to get stronger in my lower back and in my hips and and uh and those things you know but it was it was a it was a it was a serious serious work that i had to put in now correct me if i'm wrong but it, it seems like, and I, and I don't know if I heard this somewhere before, maybe it was Gable, I can't say 100%, but it seems like when push came to shove and it was came down to the time, it seems like when the Russians got tired, 
not like anybody, but when the Russians got tired, they were more susceptible. It's like, yeah. it's kind of like they gave up a little bit. Is, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they got a breaking point. Yeah. They got, they got a breaking point. They do. And if they, because they, they're very, um, I mean, they're very strong in positions, like I said, you know, and the mm -hmm. technique is, is, really, is really good. But, but once you show them that you're in the match, mm -hmm. and, I, and this is what I found out, you know, if, if they didn't come out and just blow you out in the first, you know, two minutes or first uh -huh. minute, and you're still in the match, yeah. still, then, they, they, then they start to kind of, they kind of start to break a little. They kind of break a little bit. They start to kind of panic a little bit, right? Because they think they're so, they have a lot of propaganda. I mean, they really think and believe they are the best in the world. Yeah. They always have, and they probably always will. And they think they are this, they think they own the sport of wrestling. They just do, man. I mean, it's, it's propaganda, but they've proved it. It's not and, a bad you know, thing, they, actually. They, it's a good mentality they, they, to have. It's a mentality. It's a mentality. It's a good but, mentality to have. But, but there's a, yeah, there, there's a, there's a threshold that they have. And it's that key, man. It's that, it's that, um, you get, you get that key. It's like you get a key to the safe. You get a key to the lock, right? Yeah. Yeah, you break that. You break that code, and well, so I felt like I, I felt like I got that code about yeah. the Russians, right? Because I didn't leave. I didn't lose to the Russians from '88 to '92. Wow, I mean, not not international competition. I mean, I, right. you know, I went through them pretty good, right? So I kind of got to a point where I felt like I've, I've got, I've got the code. You got the blueprint. I've got the code. I got, got the, the blueprint. blueprint. Yeah, I got the blueprint. So basically, you did what, what right. Rocky did to Drago is what you did. It's like Rocky Four all over again. You were the original That's Rocky right. Four. <laughs> you were the I original. Gable, Rocky. I think Gable, Gable was maybe Gable, you know, Gable and William Wells and those guys. Man, they that group was uh, was an amazing group, right? Right. But oh. you had to you had to go further than uh, than I thought I had to go. I mean, I got to a point, and I had to do this at Schultz too. I got to a point where I was working, man. I was working my butt off. I was working two hard practices a day. You know probably, you know, six, seven hours a day. I mean, I was putting it, putting it in. Right. And it still wasn't enough. I got to a point in 87, 86, 87, I was working my butt off, but I still, I still hadn't overcome, I hadn't jumped levels. So I got a little frustrated in 87. And, um, but I went through, I went, just kind of stayed after it. I added a workout. I started working out three times a day, like three days a week. And that kind of, that kind of helped me jump a level, you know, but, but I think a lot of it was just, um, I tell you a story. I it was '87. I just got back from Russia. Dave won the tournament. It was Tbilisi, right? The Russian national tournament. He won it. He won the tournament, and I was I was coming. Man. I, first year I beat Dave was in 1987 mm -hmm. in the World Team Trials. He beat me once. I beat him twice. I mean, he beat me twice. I beat him once. Yeah. Um, but I got fifth in the tournament, right? And mm -hmm. I had a good had a good had a good tournament. Had a good uh, trip, good tour. But I got fifth in that tournament. Dave won it. I came back that next year, man, and, and I, I was I was frustrated, and I was like, man, I'm working my butt off. I just don't know what to do, right? And so, they were having a, a Special Olympics um, in Stillwater, the Special okay. Olympics, and they called me and asked me to come volunteer and be a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, man, I went to the Special Olympics uh, uh, event and got in, and man, and started working with the kids and. You know, been around that that whole organization, man, and it kind of it changed me a little bit. I'm like, man, all these kids and these kids were just like happy to be competing, just happy to be there, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just it was just a it just kind of really made me look at myself. And when I got back home from that, man, I was just thankful and thank God that I that I was who I was and and uh, that I had the opportunity op opportunities that that I had. Yeah. And uh, I, I quit I quit you know whining and crying about how hard it was to to work right and put this work in and i just i just went to work man and, and just never stopped never started complaining again and i was i was you know happy in practice i was you know i was grateful that i had the opportunity and it kind of really gave me a boost it wow turned me around a little bit yeah absolutely. that's incredible because i mean i've heard the yeah. story i knew about i knew about the uh the blitz turn i knew about all that and how you know yeah. how you went and came back next year and just blew yep. through people but yep. i yes. never yeah that next year Yep, the next year I went undefeated. I was yeah. I was I was thirteen and zero on that tour. And, but I and never... Dave, yeah, Dave didn't. He went, but he didn't wrestle. He was just chilling. He didn't wrestle. He was just chilling, right? Because he loved Russia, he liked going to Russia. He was one of the coaches. Yeah, and uh, I won. I went undefeated on that tour. 
But see, I never knew about the Special Olympics. You know what? It's, it's yeah. crazy. Is sometimes you get the biggest inspirations from little things you wouldn't expect. You know oh what I mean? Goodness, I mean, it's just like oh the show. Goodness. It's like Absolutely. the show I'm doing here. I mean, I was normally I'd be working, going back and forth, and this little break. I mean, I try to, and I, and I honestly, I try to put myself in, a, in an athlete's. You know, because athletes, very successful athletes, are always positive, and that's the thing I've, right. I've always picked up. They're always positive. Right. So I, I try to look right. on the positive of this, and you know, yeah. but forget about the the financial turmoil I'm in. I looked at the positive, and the positive right. I, get to, I start. <laughs> this show and talk to people I've always want to talk to and get to that 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 mental mindset and it's right, and and right. that story I've never heard that story but it's true yeah. sometimes you get yeah. the biggest inspiration from things you wouldn't even think to and I absolutely think, man but, but I just can't see you bitching and moaning I can't I mean I can't see that I've never well I've ne well, you I know, it wasn't, you it wasn't so much of that, but you know, you can, you know, how you get home, man, yes. and you're, and you're, and you work your butt off and you're still not quite getting it. I wasn't there yet. Yeah, I wasn't there yet. That's what I, I, I that's what I mean. I was just, I'm, I'm just kind of not, wasn't not doubting myself, but I was like, man, what do I gotta do? What do I need to do? Yeah, to jump this level, to get over this hump. Yeah, I wasn't getting there, right? Uh -huh. And that just kind of gave me an extra boost, man. So when I, when I get tired, I was just, I would just, I think about those kids, man, and and just happy to be competing and happy to be there. Then I just, I would release it and I go back to work. Right? Dude, go that's back beautiful. Work, right? That's go back beautiful. To work. Go back to work, right? That's a yeah. great story. And I mean that. That's a great, I've never heard that. I mean, honestly, yeah. I was sitting there doing, and it's like, I put myself in the wrestler's mentality. And when yeah. I, when you said, yes, you'll do the show. After you said that, I immediately looked, I looked through about three hours of your interviews and videos. And I right. said, I, I got to get this guy. And so I, I started, I started studying you like a wrestler. Right. Man, I put my wrestler right. mentality. So I knew, but right. that's the one time I've never heard that story. And that's what yeah. I love. I don't tell it. I don't tell it all the time. I don't tell it all the time. So I'm special. It and I appreciate that. It was definitely um, a major, major moment in my life that I'll oh. never forget. For well, sure. I, pre I appreciate that, champ. I really do. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and I, one of the funniest stories I like, I like how you basically did the Jedi mind trick on Nate Carr saying, listen, why don't you just go down and I'll wrestle Dave. I'll make the Olympic team and you just go <laughs> down. No, I ain't going to do that. And then he called you, what, two weeks later? Yeah, yeah I think we'll go down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Not yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. When, when you said that story, and I forget which interview it was, you don't understand, <laughs> I had to stop the tape and I laughed out loud. I, I was listening to think about one or two in the morning and I laughed so yeah. loud. I thought I was going to wake my roommate up because I said right. the, the fact that she said to a three-time NCAA champion, yeah, look, um, you know, I think you should go down. Right, man. You're, you're not going to make it this way. You're not going to make it. Why don't you go down? We'll both make the team and we'll get gold medals. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, think, I know, I, I know. Mean, I know. Like, now I'm just talking to Nate. I'm just telling you, I was just talking to Nate yesterday. He's like, man, we got to get on the show together. We got to get on the show together. Because, of course, he's got his side. He's a, yeah. He got his side of the story. He got his side of the story. But, you, yeah. but that night, the, the, the <laughs> night we were talking, no, I see each other. It was in 1987 after yes. the World Team Trials, right? Yes. yes. And the, in the U.S. Open that year, Dave Pendy. I, I, I Dave, saw the tape. I saw the tape. Nate, Nate beat me in the semis and with a last second little throw. And uh, but then, Nate, then Nate got pinned in the, in the finals. And that was yeah. 87 U.S. Open. Yeah, I saw and that. Then 80, 87 World Team Trials. Is, so after that competition, we were like jawing at each other. We we're talking noise, man. And, and, <laughs> I think uh, that is great. You basically yeah. talking. <laughs> man, just pull away. You ain't going to make the team. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you understand, man. I just think that's but it hilarious. Works. It, it worked. Exactly. It worked. It worked. <laughs> yes, it did. I think, man, that's one of the and greatest stories. You, and we both made a team, but I tell you, it's probably something that, that, that why we are close as we is today. We're good friends today. Yeah. We res we've always respected each other. But man, when he came to he, he came to train, once he decided to go down, he came to Stillwater to train yeah. with me. Yeah. And man, some of those some of those goals were just amazing. I mean, people thought we had great matches. Yeah. But just the practices where yes. there was no pressure. You know, you would you just just going, you know. So just you wasn't you weren't hold you wasn't holding back, you're just freaking yeah. going. And so man, those were the, some of the most incredible workouts that I've ever had. Man, I wish I could have recorded though. I, I, I would love to see you in the practice room with Nate. And like you said, I would love to have seen you wrestle Lee Kemp. Man, oh, yeah. though, that know. would, you think, you think you would have got him? I think I'd have got him. <laughs> in, 80, in 88, yeah. in 88, I'd have got him. <laughs> I would have got him for sure. I'd have got him. Not in 84. Yeah. And maybe not before 88, but yeah. 88, 88 on, I'd have got him. And I worked out with him in 88. Right. I, the, the year I went to Blissey, I got to work out with him. I was going, he was living in New York. Yeah, you went to New York. I tell you that story. He was living in New York working for Clairol. 
and I was we we're leaving through out of New York, getting to going to Russia. Right. So I had a friend that that lived in New York. He was going to be mm -hmm. on the tour too. He's a wrestler, and so we went to New York and hung out with him for three days. Mm -hmm. And so during those those three days, Neat uh, Lee came in and worked out with us. So I got to roll with him. The year I won the blitzes, so I was hot and I was oh, rolling, dude. I yeah. Was, yeah. So I, yeah. I got the best of him that day. Oh, that's that, 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 do, you, do you still uh, prod him and tease him about that? Nah, nah. <laughs> I don't. You know what? I, honestly, yeah. to be honest, I remember. I just remember my heart ached for Lee in 1980 oh, when they bought. I mean, honestly, and this was before. I don't know about you, but I never really was into politics and all that stuff. And I just remember, right. but I but I do remember them saying they weren't gonna go. And even right. at that age, I think I was in sixth grade, I go, this is wrong, man. Yeah. And I just remember, because, you know, you put all those, the hard work in, and it's, and they, they take it away from people like the, the, us. I mean, it's political stuff, and, and they're going to, the, you know, the, the, the modern, the, the everyday man has to, has to basically uh, suffer. And that's what right. they did. The, the, right. I mean, it, it, with this, what's going on now, we can't help that. I mean, this is, is I mean, this is a, a virus and whatever. Right. We can't help this. But man, what what happened there was political, and yeah, it hurt my heart. Bad. And I just exactly. felt Lee would have won a gold medal, and I and yeah. man, that, that hurts me. Every time I'm yeah. his name, yeah. a little bit of me, it it really does. It hurts me for what happened right. in right. that right. situation. Right. I guess you know. Yeah, yeah, man, Lee. You know, we're good friends now. We we talk a lot. And, uh, he came he came to training camp. Like in '88, he came to training camp and kind of hung out a little bit. Came to the Olympics, came to Seoul, you know, was at the match. Came, we hung nice. out after the match, and so it was really great, man, to to have a guy that was my hero, yeah, you know, be right. there and support me through it all, man. He was, he was really, he really gave me some great insight on that that day I talked to him before going to Russia. Mm -hmm. He gave me some in, some great insight on, you know, just the changes of the guard, you know, what Dave was was doing, his mindset, what Dave was coming after him. Right. Was, you know, knocking at the door and he gave me he gave me some good insight that really helped me to prepare for Dave in that same moment because it's like changing of the guard. You right. Know, he went through it. Yeah. You know, Dave was going through it, you know, and so it really helped me, you know, along those lines. Yeah, but it was tough, man. And then of course, when I in eighty eight, we hadn't had a full on Olympics since nineteen seventy six. Right. Yes. Before we got in eighty, then we hit it again in eighty four in, in, in LA. Six. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 84, that's right, yeah. And we had, you know, in L.A., and so all those guys, I mean, they're Olympic champions, but it's tainted, man. They got that asterisk by their names, you know? Right, right. So that's a tough one, because the Russians weren't there. If the Russians aren't there, everyone's going to ask, that's not a real, that's not a real competition if the Russians aren't there. You know? Yeah, so, I'm, yeah, you kind of sell people short, but it's kind of the truth. I mean, you'll get a, a, a silver medal from, from Puerto Rico. You go, what? It's a, I mean, it's, 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 it's like paying them games. I mean, those guys are, you can't take, you can't, and it's not their fault, right, of course, and can't take yeah. it away from them. They are Olympic champions, but they have that, you know, that asterisk by their name. It's know, just the truth. I mean, it is what it is, you know. Okay, yeah. so so what what do you think your biggest attribute was? I mean, when it came to wrestling, what what, what made you like uh, the force? Like, what was your strongest attribute other than your fireman's carry? What was your strongest? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, like, you know, it, it comes down to my belief system. It, yeah. it comes down to my belief Back system, to beliefs. man. I, I, don't, I don't ever – remember approaching a match or going into a match and not believing I could win ever in my life. Wow. Ever in my life, ever wow. in my life. Okay. I think it's just that, that again, it's that belief system that, you know, my parents put into me and my coaches put in me and the people around me put into me. Mm -hmm. And um, see, when I first started wrestling, I was the smallest kid on the team. Mm -hmm. I was like 48 pounds and the next guy was like 55 pounds. And he had been wrestling a couple of years. Yeah. Right. So I was getting beat up every single day. But every day I came back, like, I'm going to get you today. I'm, I'm going to get you today, right? Yeah. And I would just be messing, playing with him, right? Yeah. But I believed it. I, I believed it, yeah. right? And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get him every day. Like, I gained on him every day. Yeah. And I didn't, win all, I didn't win all my matches, of course. Right. But I never approached a match. I don't care who they were, what the, what the scale was or what the odds were. I never – Approach a match not believing I can. You couldn't convince me that I wasn't winning that match. Wow. I don't care. Never. Okay. Right. So that's 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 the fundamental part of it of who I was and who I am. The rest of it is just hard work and uh, dedication. You know, this is my my my, my physical attributes. I've, I've always been quick. I've always had speed. Right. I've always had good good rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. and I've always always been a, just a freaking competitor. Right. I compete. If we if we play ping pong or marbles or yeah i'm, I'm coming to win that's the way to have it. i'm coming yeah. i'm coming to win man so that's just i've never i've never 
thought about anything else. I've never been anyone else. Right. And that's just that's just who I am, and I don't know anything different. Okay. Well, if you were going to wrestle you, how would you beat you? If you were going to wrestle you, how would you I beat try, yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would, I would try to slow down. The guys that gave me problems uh-huh. were the guys that didn't come after me. Like the guys that just kind of sit back and, you know, kind of, kind of let the match come to them and just defend, defend, defend. Mm-hmm. You know, that or I would try to tie me up you know, where I couldn't use my speed. You know, I'm a speed guy. I'm a motion guy. Right. Right. So that's that's what the guys that would give me problems. The guys that could tie me up. You know, two on ones or. Mm-hmm or underhooks or whatever and kind of kind of take my speed away right but i was always a pretty versatile guy i, mean, I can throw i got a couple of throws I, I use. you could throw i've never seen you throw anybody ever i've never you seen you throw you was there's some matches you missed go back and watch it. <laughs> go back and go back and watch did you see the trials you know me and dave rousing in the trials yeah i, I watched that i watched that yes that i throw him in the, in the match in the, in the in the in the second match in the second match, I threw I it. Gonna, I feel like you're gonna come to the screen look it up. right now. I'm gonna look it up. I'm I, can't, look. I can't throw. I, I didn't say you. I, I didn't say. I didn't say you couldn't throw. But ask somebody. But ask somebody. <laughs> I pissed off the champ. I pissed hey, off the my champ. my gold medal match. My gold medal match. I body locked him to the to the mat. Man, I was gonna mention that that to, to this day, and that was when, and it was funny because at the time, I think I was was I doing comedy then? Anyway. For some reason, I missed that. That was back in the day before you could DVR and all that stuff, and right, so right, I right. missed that match. And I and for some reason, when I was working Omaha on that Thursday night, I was just going through YouTube and I watched that match. And I mean, wow. the way you set him up with that body, and it's the yeah. little things when he sagged right, and you right, picked right. him up body lock. Yep. That was one of my. And I just remember going in my hotel room, going, "Oh!" And I know, I knew, I knew what the outcome was. But I went, "Oh!" Yeah. And then yeah. I ran. I literally ran into you two days later. Literally, I was at a UNO Open, University of uh, Omaha right? Open. Yeah, see, I know you remember me. And so, I, and I was walking, and I, I was looking this way, and I go, "Bam!" Yeah. I go, "Oh man, excuse me." And it was you. <laughs> and it was you. I go, "Kenny!" Yeah, and you were like, yeah, and you were just yeah, being nice. Yeah. But I, I knew yeah, you wouldn't remember yeah. that. I knew you wouldn't. That move, that move, I actually picked up from him. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you told me. I mean, you know I, I saw the video. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. How great is that? You used it against him. Use it against him. That's oh. How, now, were you nervous because that's sudden death, and that's for the gold medal, everything you work for. So it's whoever story. So when you shot in, did you was that shot on purpose so so he could sag back or and get the body lock or were no, you like no, no. I'm just trying shot? to get to him. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to him. I tried. I tried to double leg him because that that after that first takedown it was kind of that same. Same scenario, same feel. Yeah. And um, I'm just trying to get to him, man, best way I can. And then I, he gave him over the top of me. I went to that body lock. Oh, but I, I was doing that a lot. Though. I was doing that in practice a lot, you know. And, and and I was just, I was coming, I was getting that lock and I was doing, I was sliding, sliding to a, a side body lock mm-hmm. and then just kind of finishing that way. And that's, you know, I've been there a lot in practice. And so I was doing that. That was yeah, so good. But that you know, was... I wasn't I wasn't nervous, man. I at that point, to be honest with you, I was ready, man. I was ready. I'd put the work in. Right. I've I'd, I'd done everything in my power to, to prepare myself for that moment. And so at that point, I was I'd let it go, man. I'm like, look, there's nothing else I could have done. Yeah. Right. To prepare myself for this moment. I'm ready physically, I'm ready mentally, right. I'm ready spiritually. Yeah. And so whatever happens is just gonna happen, right? Best man's gonna win. So I just, I just wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't nervous. I was, I was, uh, I was ready to win. You know, I knew I could, I knew what I had to do to win. And you I did. knew I had that some of the things I had to do. Right. What I had to stay away from, and you know, I knew him just from studying and watching. I mean, I had roused him a few times before that. Right. Right. So I kind of knew we kind of knew each other. And uh, but no, man, I had I had no fear, no no nerves. I mean, other than you know, you get your butterflies, that kind of thing. Right. But, but of nothing course. that was gonna. Nothing was going to impede me from from performance. Here's a story I think that gets lost, at least for me, is I didn't know this until I was looking you up. You you dislocated your elbow before the '92 yeah. games, at like yeah. what a week before going to the games, a week yeah. before. Yeah. Yes. How did how did you wrestle with a dislocated elbow and still got the silver medal? That I mean, I don't know how that got lost in the shuffle because I didn't know that. And I was like, right. how did you do that? I mean, with wrestling being so physical and you and I think you dislocated on the side that you do your fireman's on and your your dominant side. Well, right? my, my my underhook side. My yeah. underhook side. The side the side I underhook on. Yeah. 
No, nah, it was uh, it was tough. It was painful, man. It was uh, well, it was us, it was a tough deal. Talk us through deal. that. Yeah, how did you yeah get, it was like, what? Yeah, how did you what? get through that mentally? I mean, because it's like I said, it's a dislocated elbow. So you yeah. had to put yourself. Where did you put yourself mentally? Like, okay, I'm still gonna well, win. Well, I mean, after I, when I did it, it was it was it was a freak accident. It was the last the last actually goal that we were going. We we're practicing, mm-hmm. and it was it was the end of the practice. Right. You know, I was wrestling. We were going, we were going to practice matches, and I was going to match with this kid, and, and um, and he he did a move that he should have should have done, trying to trying to turn me over, and end up dislocating it, and then um, but I popped it back in the in the, in the place right away, and so I thought I was done. I thought it was I thought I was over, man. I was because it was a really bad deal. They they rushed me to the hospital, and uh, and the doctor was like, "Well, it's a bad." It's a bad dislocation, but just but nothing nothing is, is, is broke. There's nothing your tendons are all there. It's just you know, it's gonna be swole, it's gonna hurt. And so I couldn't for so the next six days I couldn't do anything. The bike, you know, I couldn't I couldn't jump raw, I couldn't jump on it, I had to keep it in the in a, uh um a sling. And so I so all I could do was bike. And so I didn't know if I was gonna compete. But I, I was just, in my mind, I'm like you know, of course, I'm praying every day, and it's like, man, I just gotta do what I can to get my weight down, and then we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. And so, I mean, everybody was coming to me, can you compete? Can you compete? Do we need to pull you out? I'm like, no, man, I'm gonna wrestle with one arm. You know, <laughs> if I gotta wrestle with one arm, I'm not going to yeah. give this situation up. I'm not gonna not wrestle, right? Yeah. Right. And so, all I could do was bike and bike, and I would go to the training room every day. And they would put this uh, this heat pad on it. It was like a sleeve, compression sleeve, and it would it would it would compress and it would it would stem, you know, it would stem and they were doing everything they could to to get it back. And then so like two days before the tournament, some of the swelling went down, right? A lot mm-hmm. actually a lot of it, a lot of it went down. Mm-hmm. And that, but it was still yeah, you know, I was probably probably I would say my arm was probably seventy five percent, not even eighty eighty percent, right? Yeah. And so I just like, I'm just going to take it one match at a time, mm-hmm. do the best I can, give it all I got, and we'll see, we'll see where it lands, right? And so, yeah, I'm going, I'm going through the tournament. I didn't, I didn't get scored on. I got one point scored on me in the whole tournament. Wow. I was scoreless going into the finals. Hadn't been scored on. Beat the Russian 9-0, pinned the guy in the semifinals. So I was having a pretty, pretty solid tournament. With one arm. And, uh, with, with one arm. And, uh, but just, you know, again, just just not even thinking about it, just trying to um, do the things I could do, try to protect it the whole time, mm-hmm. and uh, and just compete, man. Just go and compete and do the best I can, you know. What, so what did, your, what, did your opponents know though? Did they know about your elbow? You know, we try to keep it quiet as possible. You know, I think I think the word got out. It was so funny because I had to I had to have a um, you know a brace on in the uh, uh, what do you call this? this? Is that a sling? It's like a you know, the arm break, sleeve. It was not a sleeve. It was like a, a harness thing where it goes over your neck. You know, oh, your arm. I had, yeah, I know what I you mean. Keep, I had to keep it in place, right? Right. And so going around the Olympic Village, you know, the Olympic Village, all the athletes have, you know, are there and all your competitors are there. You'll see them. And they have one cafeteria. It's a big cafeteria. Right. That's where all the athletes go to eat. Right. Right. So when I was walking around, I wouldn't wear that sling. I wouldn't wear the sling. Right. I would just like, I would walk around like this and I would hold, I put my thumb, my, my arm, and my shirt to keep it in place. I just cool. walk around. Yeah, I'd have a long sleeve shirt on or yeah. a jacket on, and I just walk around like this. Yeah. I, had to, I had to keep it in place. Yes. Right? And so oh, I, that's I, I, great. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to hide it the best way I can. Oh, that but is. If you awesome. go back, you go back and watch my match with with the uh, the guy that I lost in the finals at Korean Park, and he was that was his third. He's he 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 was two silvers and a gold medal. He had three Olympic games in him. Wow. Um, but I beat him every – that's the first time he's beat I beat him out of four out of five oh. times. That was the first time he beat me. So, but but you can tell he must have known. Yeah. At one point in the match, I did an underhook, and he, like, kind of lifted up on my on my elbow. He went after it. Oh. And so he, 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 got, he got word. He definitely yeah. got word. But I tell you what, man, it was – I can tell you it was the moment where I had just pinned the guy in the semifinals. And I was with Chris Campbell, and I was with Kevin Jackson, and we were walking back to Olympic Village, and man, we were just talking. And Chris was, Chris was all over me. He's just like looking at me, like, "Dude, you're you're my hero." Yeah, I, I don't know how, because they knew how bad my arm was, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And he's just like, dude, you're a bad dude. You, you know, Chris was like all over me, man. He was like, you're a man. I just can't believe it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the situation. I'm like, man, I go from not thinking that I was even going to wrestle in the tournament mm -hmm. to now I'm going for an Olympic gold medal, my second Olympic gold medal. Wow. And so it was really a moment, man, where I just, I just kind of, I broke down, man, and just kind of really had a, had a moment and just like really had to, had to thank God and, and thank the people that were around me, you know, that, that was stood, stood by me. And my boy, Chris Campbell was there. We were close friends and Kevin, you know, Kevin Jackson was yes. there, my boy. And he was, yes. Kevin won, he won, he won a gold medal, 92. And uh, so I just, I just was good to be with, with, with people that cared, man, and, and was there, had my back, 100%. And you guys were the original dream team, that 92 team. That was the original <laughs> dream team. They can say what that they want to say. That was a team, man. But that wrestling was, never gets the credit it deserved. That was the original dream team. I won't have that you was, say anything else. That was the original dream team. That was a hell of a team. That was a hell of a team. You know, from John and and um, myself. That's a hell of a Chris story. Campbell, I'm surprised Tim nobody Jackson, talked about that story. Bob Garner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a tough deal, man. But, yeah, one point scored against me, and that was a – and really, it was a, it was my mistake. That guy, I, I should have won the match. Yeah, he was running from me the whole time, and then I, I kind of got a little uh, impatient at the yeah. end. Yeah, and uh, ended up giving up that point, man. But but oh. I, I should have won that match. I should have been a two timer oh. for sure. But man, <laughs> what you, what you accomplished with that? Oh, that's yeah. okay. And and that's what I'm saying. To me, that was a story I knew about the ADA, and you know, like, uh, yeah, that's great on girl, and that's great. But the yeah. fact you dislocated your in a sport like wrestling, yeah. And I mean, and like I said, even before social media, yeah, you could hide stuff, but still, yeah. I mean, dude, and, yeah. And I was close. I was close to being being one point right. That I was close to being scored scoreless the whole tournament, winning the gold medal, winning my second gold medal. And not being scored on in the whole tournament, I mean, which was, wow. you know, that was that was a phenomenal, wow. uh, phenomenal opportunity right there, you know. Wow, wow. So, now, all right, it's now, close. I was close. The, the, hey, seriously, you have, you have my respect. <laughs> that, that's a test of that mental fortitude. I try to tell yeah. my producer Wyatt here. He played yeah. basketball, but I said, listen, wrestlers, man, wrestlers. Yeah. He, he, I know he's not listening to me, but wrestlers, man, <laughs> wrestlers. Before we get here, man, I'm gonna go with some Facebook questions. I put it out. I put it out there yep. on social media. I said, okay. uh, what do you want me to ask Kenny? And my my man Tony, and I love Tony to death. Tony just gets right to it. He goes, ask him. He said, who did you enjoy beating more than anyone else because that person was an asshole? Who did you enjoy beating <laughs> more than anyone else because that person was an asshole? That's a good question. I got that's a good question. I I, I got to say the Russians, man. I got more joy out of beating Russians, man, than, than yeah. anybody. Because those guys are just, they are, you're talking, you're talking worldwide. But those right. guys are just, they think they're just it, man. They, they think that everything is, they think oh, Americans are so soft and we live so soft and we eat too many, too much ice cream and bonbons, <laughs> and, you know. Well, you so every know. time you go, every time, right, 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 it's true. <laughs> but every time you go over there, there's like, uh, you know, I, I remember Dave Schultz coming to me after our, we were training. It was like two days before the tournament started in 88, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so he, you know, Dave would always talk to the Russians and you know, he went to the Russians and he was hanging around their camp and they're like, Dave, why come you're not on the team? And, you're the best guy because they didn't really, they don't know our system, right? Right, I mean, right. Our system, you got to beat the guy, right? Right. They kind of pick their guys kind of, yeah. you know, so they're like, Dave, you're working, you're not on the team, you're, you're the best guy, you know, this Monday kid, you know, you know, he was okay. And Dave was like, man, I'm telling you, this kid, this kid is coming, man, this kid is tough. Yeah. He beat me fair and square. I mean, I, I, I'm not the best guy. Yeah. I'm not the best guy, right? Yeah. And so they came back to me like, tell me like, oh man, the Kenny, the Russians think you're, it's, it's going to be a cakewalk. They're like, well, why is he on the team? He shouldn't be on the team. He's, I try to tell him Monday. I try to tell him. <laughs> you know what I remember, man? You posted that picture of you and when you won to bleach and you had yeah. the white cape. Yeah, dude, yeah. that was the most gangster I've ever seen. You had that and you had that smile <laughs> like this. Man, dude, right. I oh my I gotta find that on your social media feed. Right, but if right. you go to if you follow Kenny Monday on his feed, you in that white cape and everybody has that look on their face like, damn, I guess he was the man, you know? Are you still there? Right. Okay. Man, that right, right, that was right. beautiful, dude. I love that. That was beautiful. So, man, I oh, yeah, always yeah. been an inspiration. Man, before I get out of here, I, first of all, I want to, like I said, thank you, because I know I know the annoyance I can be to people. So, <laughs> when, when I hit you on, so, when I hit you on social media. I, I want to come ride with you sometime, man. How, how long have you been riding motorcycles? Man, I've been 
like I rediscovered it. You know what? Rest, it, it's all kind it, of talents. My, la- my life has come 180 because it was like I grew up. Okay, I wrestled. I started wrestling in third grade. I got a motorcycle yeah. in third grade. Okay. Wow. So d- during the course of life, whatever, you know, I went to junior yeah, college to wrestle. Yeah. And then yeah. I didn't ride motorcycles again in my life. So when I moved to Indianapolis in 2006, I yeah. reconnected with mo- – I got a motorcycle again. I got a motorcycle yeah. in 2006 or seven, and then yeah. I started doing jujitsu. And it's like uh, – and, yeah. and, you know, which is kind of like rest. So it's like I, I rediscovered my two loves. I mean, th- those yeah. are my two loves in life is motorcycles and wrestling. Those two are synonymous to me, and, and I, I reconnected with both, and it's yeah. been the greatest. Because That's the great thing yeah. about moving to Indianapolis. I reconnected with both my loves. So, yeah, yeah man, do, yeah. do you ride? Do you ride? Yeah, yeah, I ride. I don't do ride mean? now, but I had a bike back in, uh, it's been a while. You know, I got, I sold it when I got married. I got married. Oh, man. I got all, man, I got all my toys. I got <laughs> all my toys. I had a vet, motorcycle. Uh-huh. You were living you know, the life. You were living the life. Me. Yeah, man. I had to give it all that stuff. I had to go buy a house and live <laughs> you that married, in- married life. Hey, you had to be an adult. I don't know what that's well, like. I've been, I, I'm I've been had a bike since then. I've been had a bike since then. You really, you still single, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's not a good life. I stay up three o'clock in the morning eating popcorn and coffee. I really do. Yeah, right. I mean, that's why I, I gotta come. That's, that's why I annoy you all the time on social yeah. media because I have no yeah. life. That's why I hit you up at <laughs> one o'clock in the morning on that yeah, Sunday. I gotta, I gotta come ride with you, man. I, I gotta come ride with you sometimes. Well, if you do, do it right. Do it right. You get, do a safety course first because I'm all about safety. Do a safety course first. Yeah. They teach you how to ride the right way. And I guarantee. And I swear to God, if if I get some work in North Carolina, I'm gonna ride down there and I'm gonna come to Durham right. and I'm gonna find you. And I hey, I know you're older, but I know you still rolled. I know you still got it. And you know what? I still got a little in, left me in me too. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a Muskogee rougher, man. You, you can, know, that's, you that's how we get do it, man. You can so, always get it. We, <laughs> it's like I tell her, you can always get it, man. I'm always up. So, so I, I'm I, always ready. I stay ready. Okay, stay well, ready. real, real quick, like, real quick, like, okay, I know you went to MMA and now you know, and yep. you coach whatever. Uh, when it comes to MMA, like, what made you do, uh, like, not pursue it? I know you did the one match only because a dude, you know, you asked him for some money and he gave, she gave you the money. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One how, fight. Come, how come you didn't, like, stay with it and you just kind of, like, you know, you like, know, one and I was done. done, man. I was I was done. It was after 96. I was really, I was 38 years old. I was really done competing. Okay. You okay. know? Yeah. If it, if it had hit 92. Yeah. But I was, I was 30. When I was 30, I, I would have I would have gone full time. Okay. Yeah, you know, okay. but you know, I was, I was, I was done really competing at that point. I didn't want to. I was married, you know. I was, you know, I was, I was done training. Yeah. Right. Okay. You know, I, you. I was really, I, I was done. So it just, I just, it just, it just missed me. Yeah. Oh, I know. It missed me. That's the it worst part me. of everything, man. It's like you, yeah. you, you get to that, you go, oh, it, I'd have, I, yeah. I'd have been full time if UFC would have been like it is now in 1992 after 92 Olympic Games. Yeah. I'd have healed up. Not have been in there for sure. 100%. Man, Kenny, we, we got to wrap up. My producer gave me uh, uh, the thing to wrap up. And there was so I, much more I wanted to say. I want to talk about uh, your boys, which do a, a great job being a father, by the way. Uh, anybody knows, it. follow uh, follow follows Kenny. Uh, his son, Kennedy Money, is in the transfer pro- portal. Um, <laughs> good luck to him. I, we don't have time to get Thanks. into it, but good luck to him. And I mean yep. that. I follow him yep. on social media Appreciate also. I, I bother him yeah. and Quincy. Yeah. I don't bother yeah. Quincy yeah. as much because, because it's funny because to me, Kennedy is kind of like you, but even but he's really in the social media. He's out like, there. Yeah, he's yeah, out he there. is. And good for him. Yeah. He's got a great smile. And I love when yeah. he upset that kid from Missouri in the, in, in, yep. in the tournament. That was great. Yeah, and Morales, he whooped, yeah. he whooped that kid's ass from uh, I think it was a uh, was it Virginia Tech or uh, yeah, no, was it Virginia Tech. Oh, he Virginia whooped Tech. his ass. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 yeah, I follow him and I follow you, but I don't hit yeah. Quincy up like I do Kennedy. I feel bad yeah, for hit Kennedy. Him up. Yeah, Quincy, Quincy's a little, little more <laughs> understated. But yeah, he's got a great personality. I just he's love you. Honestly, I love your whole family, man. You guys are yeah, classy. Yeah. But like I said, you're Oklahoma classy, and and I and I appreciate that. And before I get here, I want to tell you that our our Tulsa connection is that Wayman Tidsdale, his high school coach, his high yeah. school coach's brother used to date my aunt, Mike Mims. Yes, Mike Mims. Yeah, his brother used to date my aunt. Is that right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So we were this close. Me and you were this close. You don't realize right, we were that right, close. Right, right, so right. yeah, we were that close, man. So uh, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. Mims. I did a lot of work with Mims, man. I he taught him how to shoot the basketball, right? Mims was a great. Yeah, were, yeah, were, you, yeah. were you like any other wrestler? You like to foul? I mean, you like to shoot, or you just like to foul? Dude, I could play, dude. I could play. I could play. <laughs> I was, I was, I always played on the playground. You know, 
No, I can yeah. beat, man. I can play. Y'all from Tulsa, man. You know, I can play. Dude. I, I know. You ain't got to be that you way. Know? I know, man. You ain't got to tell me. I, I know. Play. I mean, I know. But, I mean, just remember, yeah. though, that the Muscogee Ruffers beat you guys back in 86, though. Just remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> in football. In football. In football. Yeah, it was right. It was a, that was a tough loss. <laughs> but you know what? But you know why? Because you guys talk noise going into the halftime. They go, and the victory dance will be at, and that's when the Ruffers went. Yeah, what did you just say? That was a tough loss, man. That yeah. was a tough loss, dude. Yeah. So, man, so, you know what, I, like I said, honestly, I knew you didn't know me from Adam, and you gave me the time, <laughs> and it was great to go down memory lane and get those stories yeah. that I, I had no idea about, and I am so grateful, champ, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, you carry yourself with the class that, and, and, like, it's not, it's just real, and I, I knew it, like I said, I knew it was because it's Tulsa, and anybody that's grown up in Oklahoma, especially back in the day, you yeah. were the, honestly, you were the idol that you looked up to, everybody did, across the board, and you've never disappointed, and I just want to say thank Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'll be bothering you on social media tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, Appreciate Kenny. it, man. Thank Have you a great time, day. And good luck fun. to your sons, man. Yes, All sir. All right, come through now. Come through. I will. Definitely, man. Right, Thanks, man. bro. I appreciate right. that. Hey, it's BT with Tales from the Gemini. I was talking to the great Kenny Monday. And I mean from the bottom of my heart. That was... I was almost wanting to cry. I was so happy talking to him. And that's greatness personified. So Tales from the Gemini. Kenny Mundy, Olympic champion. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you had a great time. And as usual, you know the word.